We uh, are presenting on a case study in Washington State um, around OSM trail cap uh, compatibility. Wow, uh, with Purity Trail data. My name is Steven Sakara. My name is Monica Brandeis, and we're from Credit Locana. Formerly known as Critigen, um, it's a shameless plug. Uh, Locana, we provide spatial um, solutions, integration, and connection between, um, you know, with a variety of different public and private clients doing a variety of different things. So if they need any help with that kind of space, uh, please let us know. We'd love to help out. So we'll go through a little bit of the analysis that we did. So I'll give a little bit of a presentation on the purpose of why we did it and why we did it. And then I'll kick it off to Monica for compatibility and OSM collaboration. So if you didn't know, we we're kind of in a sequel uh, of this project. Last year, we presented in tooth on, on the difference between an, uh, two different types of trails, an official trail and a social trail. Um, official, very blanket statement of being something that's marked by a land manager or, or owner. Whereas a social trail is something that's more physically manifested by um, a hiker or pedestrian. Um, there's a, a, an OSM project, the US Trail Access Project, that had tagging schemas that gave us the, the, the guidelines on what should be defined as one or the other. And then based on the data collection process that we did last year, it kind of influenced updates to that schema. Um, and then we just kind of quantified the relationship between in focal areas between the two. Um, in particular, identifying social trail areas um, in OSM and then reaching out to the local communities that we have a relationship with um, to make the necessary updates in OSM. And just for context, um, last year we did national uh, forests and parks um, in Arizona and Colorado. We did that because we wanted to create a control that last year, which was uh, have go through areas that had a relationship between the local OSM community and the local government agency. And what we were seeing in these places was that they had a relationship where they would do bulk import of government data into these national parks and national forests. This year, we decided to get rid of that control and provide, provide a case study in an area where we knew there was not an infrastructure currently in place between the local OSM community and the local government agency in that respect. So the basic of the, the objectives in this analysis is to curate a, a government data set to identify the true gaps in OSM and then try to inspect OSM for expected attribution stuff like trail types with an operator tag and uh, or access tag, excuse me, and then ownership with access tags. This is also pertinent because uh, two years ago, the Washington State Legislator had directed uh, the Recreation and Conservation Office, which we'll refer to now as RCO, um, to update their uh, state trails database. So we want the latest and greatest data for them. They also wanted to update or create a data management system to support the new database that they were building. Um, so just it was in a like-minded of approach. It just seems more pertinent now with all the work that people have been doing with trails and within OSM um, to connect the, the two between the government agencies and OSM that are working on similar entities. So because we're building a government data from scratch um, and kind of doing that sort of analysis, we had to use a different set of queries based on the tagging schemas that we already had known from last year's presentation and then kind of making... Uh, um, trying to find ways that we can make connections between that government data and then what's currently in OSM. So we use a variety of different queries with a variety of different sort of tagging schemas to play around and give us some uh, percent confidence in the relationship that they had between the two. Right. Ooh. Let's leave this okay. in here. So like Stephen mentioned, we have a government data set that is kind of in the same concept of, hey, that's collect different level of agency data together. We have on the other side, OSM data with a really, really good and um, very, very rich information for that. Now, our question then also, what's inspired in the trail working group? Um, now it's called Trail Stewardship Group uh, Initiative. Um, is like, okay, government has all of the information for the land managers and they have access tag. And if we can have those two start talking to each other, grab, you know, what they need, not necessary, um, it needs to be a one product. Um, it will actually hopefully try to bring the two pieces a little bit closer and closer every iteration. Do that. Um, this analysis is having some assumptions. So we're not here. We're not here to do uh, 
OSM quality. Some of you might know me. Um, I have done a lot of OSM quality insurance in the past. But we're not here to talk about who, who's better, um, who is it more accurate. We are here to actually see their close and or they are nearby. Um, not necessarily need to be the same. Um, the RCO data set, the curate uh, data set were verified um, in a different stage and still currently verified it. The OSM and the RCO data set are curated from a different type of source, um, the community and so on, but they are relatively compatible um, in a sense. So we don't make assumptions. We'll start with super simple, everyone can do this. Um, find out if there is this species, if those two data sets actually talking to each other, are they the same trails? Um, our very, very preliminary analysis did show, hey, there's 95%, they're actually talking to each other in some sort. Um, their 50% are highly compatible, means the trail's pretty much the same. Um, we have a slightly different way to mapping the ground shoes. And there are 35% that OSM roam, OSM trail might be unnamed, or there could be um, a more collaboration together. We also identify there has some potential It's a little surprising when we find out that, but 5%, I want to know what, what's happened there. We actually were able to identify some small segments that within the government that says take Seven Lakes Basin Olympic National Park, for example. Um, there are some um, roads, trails that is um, not being mapped in the OSM. But from this, giving you a, a sense of, yeah, they're kind of comparable. The red is the OSM and the green being. Um, the RCO data set. You can also see there are some half high uh, trails that is only OSM only. So you you can see a hint of oh, they can kind of can talk to each other. Um, and then some of the things were kind of false positive because we did set up as a fifty feet. I think it's wide enough that they should talk to each other. Um, and then. There are some discoveries we did find like, okay, they actually have the same geometry. It's just a little shift one way the others for that 5%. So it's less than 5%. Let's switch to the uh, high capability. Like, are they talking? Like, I'm very data person. It's a data level um, analysis. You can see in OSM, tagging OSM wiki, the highway post pass has all of the attributions compared to the RCO data set, you know, all the attributes are almost there one to one. Um, we also sampling few of the informations. They are highly compatible. All of them has almost all great information as far as uh, RCO data set um, is right now. Um, for the operator tag, it's a little bit tricky. Um, on the OSM wiki, it does suggest it sh the operator tag should be in the route equals hiking, which is a hiking network. Um, and it is a relation, so it's a connection of different OSM ways. Versus um, the government data set, the RCO data set, we have the layer manager base in a per segment. So there is a little bit data model wrangling we need to work on. We are also serving on observing few things of the lane manager operator tag. Um, we find a lot of OSM ways um, using operator tag as well. So I think that there could be something that the trail uh, future group might be interested or they might be too small, um, you know, to figuring out and bring the inconsistency um, back to consistent. Now I want to talk about the fancy power of the OSA. So you see, we generate something that there is a gap. 
on the May 4th, and then I was like, send it this message to the local chapter through Slack. Um, and then I was like, hey, can so someone would be interested to take a look? You know, I don't expect people will actually reply to me. Um, one of the volunteers and um, also a board member, Matt, you can see his pictures on there. So a lot of a lot of the efforts come in right within like a day or two. And the mapping is done on May 7th. Those are the version one. Those are the new data that we in the state part. That's the power of the OSN and the how fast once the gap has been identified, the community is very driven to make this better, I think. Um, for the, there are still a lot of big efforts needs to be complete. And I'll have Stephen cover that. So like what we did last year um, in Arizona and Colorado, uh, once we found out that the gap analysis and that there were um, discrepancies in OSM, whether it be bad data or data that doesn't exist, like Monica's alluding to, um, we utilized MapLet and, and it's a simple way to get the community involved and give them a sort of a package of like, here is what we think there's bad data or you know in, incorrect data or anything like that. Um, and then empower the local community to, um, to make the necessary edits. Uh, and so we started off from there and then we're trying to branch out and think what's next, right? That's solving the solution immediately. How do we go from here out of scalability? As we were doing it, we were just, it was undeniable the interest that, the mutual interest that exists between RCO and um, initiatives like public domain map. Um, so it, it's a complex issue that we're trying to gauge as well when we're connected with uh, local state agencies or uh, in Washington state. Um, but, you know, we're going to keep an eye out for opportunities to potentially engage with the two to see if there's an opportunity where we can turn those initiatives into one in some, in some aspects. So, um, you know, data contributions uh, from the RCO would be great. They are actively creating their own data collection process and building their own trail database, like we mentioned earlier. You know, why is that something we can't share across the board, put into public domain and have that accessible to the public domain map? Um, and if not, is there an opportunity where... RCO can use public domain map as a way in which to uh, verify their own independent data collection process. Um, there's something that we just see going forward and we would love to support and continue to see if there's ways where the initiatives become as one. So just want to do some acknowledgements um, to let the local Washington uh, trail group, uh, we appreciate everyone's time, especially our moderator, Matthew. Um, and then <laughs> and then to, uh, to analyst efforts from our own company uh, this year and last. Um, really appreciate their time. Yeah, and, I, well, but, personally, I want to say thank you. I asked the questions through the Slack, you know, it's always getting the answer to me. This is how we should do it. And the tagging uh, from the big trail group. And, you know, once you want to reach out to the local people, there is, they're there for you. So thank you very much. Thanks, y'all.